Hey guys, thanks for stopping by on a Wednesday night. Um, appreciate so much each and every one of you checking in and spending some time with us. Um, I, I know that uh, this is not our, our first option for how we would spend our time together. Um, I, I certainly know that it is uncomfortable for, for many of you to uh, be going about it this particular way, but I wanted to take a moment to just uh, brag on each and every one of you and thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart for your willingness and your flexibility and your patience through all of this. Um, I was speaking with somebody earlier today and we were just talking and I, I said, you know, this is just new territory for all of us. And I think each and every one of us in, in some capacity, in some way is learning um, how to, to navigate this thing. Um, we're learning new things every single day. And um, it's just been so good to, to hear from you and to receive encouragement from you and to know that, that you are patiently learning with me, navigating these things with me. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to you. As your pastor, um, it means so much to me that you would be willing to uh, be flexible through all of this, that you would be willing to just say, hey, you know, give us what you can, give us what you got, and uh, we'll, we'll make the best of a, a bad situation. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for your patience, your support, your words, your calls, your encouragement. Uh, they certainly mean a whole, whole lot to me. Um, just by way of announcement tonight, um, I wanted to just remind you of a couple things that are going on and things that are happening. Um, remember that we are um, not having services uh, here at the church. Uh, so that means that Sunday morning at 1030, uh, you're invited to tune back into our YouTube channel. Uh, you should be able to access that through the Facebook page as well as through the website. Um, so we invite you to take advantage of that. Thank you for everybody that joined in last week. Uh, last time I checked, we were up to over 110 views on that uh, channel, on that page, that sermon. So thank you very much for taking the time to do that. Uh, the next thing that I wanna remind you of is uh, there are still opportunities to give to the church. Um, by no means are we trying to pressure you to do that. We just want you to know that um, there are some avenues that you can continue to do that should the Lord um, place that and lay that on your heart to do so. You can give uh, by mailing that into the church office. You can arrange a time to drop that off to us. You can also uh, take advantage of our online giving. If you go to the website, to the online giving tab, just click on that. It's going to take you directly to the link. Link, uh, where you need to go and you can set up a one-time gift to us or you can set up a reoccurring uh, gift to us whatever works for you uh, we just want you to know that those options are available and those are things that uh, you can take advantage of um, I want to go ahead and, and pray for us tonight and after we pray we're going to dive into a lesson tonight uh, that deals with uh, testing our understanding of, of who Jesus is. Uh, but before we get to that, let's just take a moment and let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another night. We thank you for an opportunity to gather. Lord, even if this gathering time is uh, not the traditional way that we gather, even if this gathering time is, is not like we are used to, um, we thank you for the privilege of being able to get together. We thank you for the privilege of, uh, of just being able to connect. We thank you for the technology that allows us to do that. And Lord, as we spend just a couple of moments together tonight, I pray that you will encourage us. I pray that you will strengthen us, that you will renew our faith. And Lord, I pray that we will just hear from you. And Lord, that we'll take something away from this gathering time tonight that will help us through the rest of the week. We love you tonight, Father. We ask for your help now as we look at your word. May it speak to us, inspire us, teach us, challenge us, and make us different. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight I want to invite you to wrestle with this question. I want you to think about uh, this thought tonight. I, I want you to ask or answer this question for me. Um, are you following the example that Jesus set? 
Are you following the example that Jesus set? Now, I know that most of us uh, on a Wednesday night who are tuning in for this uh, are probably our knee-jerk reaction, our immediate response to such a question is to say, well, of course, I'm, I'm following Jesus. I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian my whole life. I, I grew up in the church. I, I know the songs. I know the scriptures. I know when to sit and when to stand. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm doing the example of Jesus. I'm following the example of Jesus. And, and I think probably most of us are, but before you really, really answer that question tonight, I want you to explore uh, just a few of the teachings of Jesus with me tonight. And then when we get to the end of that, uh, then I want you uh, just in your own heart, in your own personal time with God, uh, in the own, your own solitude, your own quietness, then I want you to answer the question. Um, I'm realizing the older I get, the less I know. Uh, I'm realizing that the older I get, I, I really don't know anything. Um, now, some of you are saying amen. You already knew that about me. Uh, you could look at me. You could spend five minutes around me and uh, you could say, well, duh, we know we already knew that. Um, but the older I get, the more I realize there's a lot of things that I simply do not know. Um, I, I made a, a partial list of some of the things I don't know. I'd like to share it with you. Um, I don't understand why things that can go wrong wait until the worst possible time to go wrong, to go wrong. Um, in other words, why when something can go wrong, does it wait until the absolute worst time to do it? Why can't it do it at a better time? Um, I don't understand why every time I put on a white shirt is the day that I spill coffee down the front of me. I don't understand why it always rains when I go on vacation. I don't understand why politicians can't get along. Um, I, I don't understand women, um, and uh, men, you can say amen if you want to, but I, I just don't. Um, I, I don't understand how some people can sleep without a fan on. I don't understand why the kids in the Tricks commercial won't ever let the rabbit have a bowl of Tricks. Uh, I don't understand algebra, trigonometry, or quantum physics. Uh, I don't understand why the sports team I pick to win is always the team that loses. Um, there's just so many things. Now, I could go on and on, but we don't have enough time to cover everything I don't know. Those are just a few of the things that I don't know tonight. Um, obviously, my list is meant to be somewhat comical. Um, but I got to thinking over these last few days and weeks, especially as we are in this Lenten season, leading up to uh, the moment when Jesus will go to the cross and lay down his life for us, and then leading to the moment when we celebrate his resurrection. I, I thought about all the things that Jesus taught his disciples thought about all the time that they had spent together and all the places they traveled together and all the things the disciples got to observe and be eyewitnesses to. And I thought about the words of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. And I remember as I read the stories of Jesus, as I read the stories of the disciples, there were numerous times when the disciples simply didn't understand what Jesus was doing. There, there, there were so many times when, when Jesus would try to just put it out there and it was, seemed so simple, and yet he would get to the end of the teaching and the disciples would be looking at each other like, Master, we have no idea what you're talking about. Or there would be times where after the lesson was over, the disciples would get together and they would be murmuring to each other. And Jesus would say, hey guys, what's going on? Do you, do you still not understand after all this time? I wish tonight that I could tell you that, boy, I always understand what Jesus is doing. I wish that I could tell you tonight that I always understand what God is up to. I wish I could tell you tonight that in the midst of everything that's going on around the coronavirus, I wish I could tell you that I knew what God was up to. I wish I could tell you I knew what he was doing. But the reality is I don't. 
And there are many things that God does in my life. There are many things I, I witness in this world that I don't understand. But I also know this, there are some things that Jesus did. And there are some things that Jesus said. And there are some teachings that Jesus gave that all of us have to come to an understanding of. All of us have to, 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 to allow him to grow our faith to the point where we um, accept and develop an understanding of what he was talking about. It's the way that our faith is going to grow. It's the way our, our, our life is going to mature, the way our Christian faith is going to mature. And one of the things that, that, that I remember, one of the lessons that I remember Jesus teaching uh, happens in John chapter 13. John chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 um, is a section of Scripture known as the Upper Room Discourse. Um, it's called that because, obviously, it happens in the Upper Room. Um, it's that final time that Jesus will be with His disciples before He goes to the cross. And in that time, Jesus was, was again teaching His disciples. And there's about three things that happen in that upper room that really stand out to me. We won't talk about all of them in great detail tonight, but I will mention them, and I'll kind of work backwards. I'll go to John chapter 17. In John chapter 17, uh, Jesus does something very interesting. He prays for His disciples. And he not only does he pray for his disciples, uh, but he also prays for um, the entire world, really. And um, in John chapter 17, verses 15 through 19, I want you to hear what Jesus says. He says, My prayer is not uh, that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am of the world. Um, sanctify them by the truth, your truth, as you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For I sanctify them myself, that you too may be truly sanctified. Um, Jesus, in other words, he prayed that, that God wouldn't take us out of the world or spare us or protect us from everything that happens in the world, but he prayed that we would be strong and sanctified and holy uh, to withstand and take on whatever happens in the world. So God has us here for a reason. He has us here for a purpose. He, he could have easily um, removed us from the dangers of this world, but he said, Father, I want you to keep them here and, and I want you to protect them through everything they go through. So God has already prayed for us. Jesus has already prayed for us tonight. We have his prayer of protection and guidance in our life. The second thing that happened in the upper room is that Jesus served that what we become, will we, excuse me, what will become known as the communion meal. That very first time that he gathered with his disciples to share in that sacred meal. It was a meal that he instituted to, to remind them of, of his sacrificial gift that he was going to give on Calvary. And, and he, he challenged them that every time that they partake or, or participated in that meal, they were to remember what he did for them. And what a beautiful gift he gave us in instituting that meal. But there was another major thing that happened in, in the upper room that night happened near the beginning of their, their gathering time. It's in John chapter 13. And in John chapter 13, John gives us an account of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Now, we don't really know uh, who should have been washing feet, but what we do know is that nobody did this traditional act. Uh, in other words, this was something that was customary of the day. Feet would be washed before you sat down to have the meal. Uh, on this night, maybe there wasn't a servant there. Uh, maybe the, the person that was supposed to wash feet just got called away to some other gathering. Or maybe Jesus was hoping one of his disciples would step up and take the lead. Or, or maybe Jesus just knew that this was going to be a teaching opportunity. For whatever the reason, feet didn't get washed. And, and John tells us that near the end of the meal, Jesus got up from the table. He, he took a basin of water. He put the towel around his waist. And the teacher, the master, became the servant. 
the master, the teacher, the one of authority, humbled himself and did the task that was designed for servants. Now, the disciples had a hard time with that. They didn't quite understand what Jesus was up to. And Peter, of course, is going to chime in and he's going to offer his two cents and Jesus is going to have to put him in his place. And, and really, there's a dialogue that involves and unfolds there. Um, but the, the part of the story that I really want to take us to for, for just another moment or two tonight is in John 13, beginning with verse number 12. Listen to these words. It says, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do that. I wonder tonight if you heard the question that Jesus asked. He said, do you understand what I have done for you? I wonder tonight, do you understand what Jesus has done? I'm not talking about the, him going to the cross. I'm not talking about him laying down his life. I'm talking about in that act of washing feet. Do you understand what Jesus was really doing and what Jesus was really trying to say? So I thought about those words uh, this week. I began to realize that there's two or three lessons that I think Jesus not only wanted his disciples to know, but he wants us to learn them. This, this Easter season, this Lenten season, there, there are two or three things that I really think we have to, to come to grips with. There are two or three things that we really have to know and understand. And I don't mean just saying in our mind that we know them. I mean, I mean really showing the evidence in everyday life that we know these things. The first thing that I see that Jesus did is, is Jesus set an example for us of how we are to treat others. Jesus set an example for us of how we are to treat others. Um, all throughout his ministry, Jesus called his disciples to love others. He called them to love, and now here in John chapter 13, he's calling them to serve. I want to challenge us tonight as a church. In the not-too-distant future... Um, the, the coronavirus is going to fizzle out and life is going to, to somewhat return to, to normal. It may take some time, but we're, we'll get there. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering how will the events of these last few weeks and the next couple of weeks to come, how will it change us? How will it change our life? How will it change the way that we view our community? How will it change the way that we respond to the needs that are going to arise from everything that's happened? One of the things that I'm hoping, one of the things that I'm praying for, one of the things that I'm longing for is that we will become people who remember that Jesus calls us to love others. I'm praying that we'll remember how we're supposed to treat people. I'm praying that we'll continue to, to extend the hand of fellowship, the, the hand of grace and love, and that we'll continue to be people who speak life and words of, of peace and meaning and hope into people's lives. I'm praying that we'll follow the lead of Jesus and that we will be people that, that, that through our example, through our actions, will treat others the way that Jesus treated us and the way that Jesus treated others. The second thing that, that I see tonight is that Jesus calls us to sacrificial servanthood. Jesus calls us to serve others. He, he calls us to, to put our own selfish wishes and desires and hopes uh, aside and, and to not only see the need but to, to get involved and to do something. It occurred to me this afternoon, every one of the disciples that gathered that night, every one of them, 
knew that the feet needed to be washed. It, it sort of reminds me of, of the, what I call the same thing happens every night at our house. Um, every night at our house, we sit down at the family table, we have dinner together, we eat, and afterwards there, there's dishes to be done. And um, it seems like every night everybody sees that there's dishes to be done, and everybody knows that dishes have to be done, but no one's ever eager to get up and do the dishes. Wonder how many times in our life do we see the needs around us? Wonder how many times in our life do we see people who are struggling and people who are hurting and people that need to be served, and rather than jump in and do something, we, we sit back and we wait for somebody else to take the, the lead, or we wait for someone else to take the responsibility. I'm praying, I'm hoping tonight that, that we'll follow the lead, of exam, uh, the lead and example of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying tonight that we will develop sacrificial servanthood in our life. I'm praying that we as a church, when this is all over, that, that, that we will be so changed that we will come together and, and that we will say, hey, how can we serve others in our community? How can we get outside of the walls of our church. We, we've proven that we can survive without meeting in the physical building. So now that we know that we can do that, how do we go out and serve people around us? How do we get beyond ourselves and out into the world that, that needs to know that we're here and that we love them? Jesus modeled sacrificial servanthood. The last thing that I, I'll leave us with tonight is that Jesus reminds us that obedience is the key to blessing. And the very last verse that I read to you, verse 17, he says, Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I love that word, if, because everything hinges on that word. Jesus says, if you do what I've told you to do, if you do what I've modeled for you, if you do what you have seen me do, if you love the way that I have loved, if you serve the way that I have served, if you give the way that I have given, if you do what I have done, your life will be blessed. It all hinges on our obedience. And I think one of the lessons that Jesus was trying to drive home with these, these men during this final time of gathering with them was just how important it was going to be for them to obey his every word, to do everything that he said um, to do. Interestingly enough, during this upper room discourse, Jesus is also going to talk about a gift that's coming. He says, after I leave, the Father's going to send another one to you. He's going to be coming, and He's going to be your comforter, and your counselor, and your teacher, and He's going to remind you of all the things that I've said to you, and He's going to be the one that will give you power and strength to do the work. He's the one that will help you to remain obedient to me. You see, all along, what Jesus was desiring is their obedience. So I wonder tonight, how is your obedience? Do you, do you really understand what Jesus did? Do you really understand what Jesus is calling us to, what Jesus is asking us to do? He's calling us to get beyond ourselves. He's calling us to pick up our basin of water. He's calling us to, to pick up our towel and to go out into the world and find people who are hurting and find people who are lost and find people who are searching and find people who are needy. And he's calling us to do everything we can to meet those needs. Oh, church, how I pray tonight. How I pray tonight that we will be those people. I pray tonight that we'll develop that, that servant's heart, that servant's attitude. I pray that we'll take, the heed, take heed in, uh, of what Jesus said, that we'll follow his lead, and that we will do all the things that he's called us to do. God has opened up some doors for us. God is preparing some opportunities for us. 
One of the questions that I've been wrestling with in my mind, and I'm looking forward to maybe having some conversations with people about this, the question is how will the events of the last two or three weeks, how will it change our lives and our ministries going forward? Because I believe we can't come back together when this is all over with. I don't believe tonight that we can all come back together and just go on like we always have. I don't believe that we can come back together and, and act like what has happened has never happened. I believe that we have to let this change us. I believe that it has to change the way we do ministry. I believe it has to change the way that we, that we meet together. You know, I believe that, hey, maybe it's time for us to find some new days of the week to gather people together and do life with them. Maybe it's time for us to start meeting in McDonald's over coffee and saying, hey, let's just, let's read this passage of scripture together. Let's see what it says for us. Maybe it's time for us to think about some different ways of, of doing church, different time slots, different, different avenues for, for having church. You know, sometimes God has to force us out of our comfort zone to remind us and to teach us that we can do it, that with his help, we can. And I think that's what Jesus wanted his disciples to know. With his help, they could be the people he needed them to be. With his help, they could love like he wanted them to love. With his help, they could serve the way that he wanted them to serve. With his help, they could be the disciples he wanted them to be. I believe tonight the same is true for us. With God's help, we can be who He wants us to be. So the question that I'm leaving you with, are you doing, are you doing what God has asked you to do? Do you understand what God wants you to do? Is your life being marked by the kind of obedience that says, I'm following Jesus and doing what He's called me to do? As I've been saying all week, know that you're being prayed for tonight. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. I'm so excited to be able to, to be doing life with you all. You're, we're praying for you. We're believing God to do some great things. And I'm going to close tonight with prayer. I want to remind you that if you have a prayer request, feel free to contact the church office. Uh, message us on, on Facebook, send an email, send a, a written letter. Uh, we'd love to be able to continue to pray for you. Hope that you'll join us tomorrow, excuse me, hope you'll join us Sunday at 1030 as we go back to the Word and hopefully find inspiration to help us in our journey with God. We love you tonight. Let's pray as we conclude our time together. Jesus, help us to be the kind of people you need us to be. Jesus, help us to be the kind of servants that will put the towel around our waist and pick up the basin and go out into a world that needs to know that you love them. We're grateful that you set the example. We're grateful, Lord, that you showed the way. Now help us to walk in that way. Father, give us your grace. Give us your strength. Give us your encouragement. And Father, we look forward to the day when we can once again meet in person. But until then, keep us faithful to do the work you prepared for us to do. We love you. We ask all of this now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. Have a great evening. Have a great rest of the week. And uh, we'll see you next time.